Okay, I'm sorry, I was right. I didn't have much memory left on my other device, so sorry that one cut out. So this will now be segment five, and I'm talking about alkenes. We've lost two hydrogens, and so now, instead of having A-N-E as our suffix, we have E-N-E -E as our suffix. And what I said was we're going to uh, skip cis-trans isomers, but what I can tell you is that when you have a single bond, you're free to rotate. So look at the position of my thumbs. When I have a double bond, my thumbs are no longer free to rotate. You guys try this at home. So what that means is in order for my thumbs or other carbons to go in the opposite direction, I have to break the bond, rotate, and now my carbons are going in other directions. So that's a different kind of isomer, but you can just know that it's there, but that's all I'll say about it. Okay, if I have four, by the way, if I take this double bond and I move it over there, it's still propene with the double bond between the first and second. Double bond between the first and second. So this is the same as that. So we only get propene as our name. Okay, once I move to four, I can put the double bond here and we would name that butene or four double bond butene, right? This is not the same as that because this has the double bond between the first and second carbon and this one has the double bond between the second and third carbon or second and third carbon. So whether I count left to right or right to left, I want the lowest number possible. So, so since that's not the same as that, I have to provide a number which tells me that they're not the same. So I'm going to indicate where the double bond starts. By the way, just to make it crystal clear, this is also one butene because my double bond is between the one and the two. Okay? All right? Okay, now we also have this substance that we call benzene. Okay, benzene is a very, very important substance in carbon chemistry. So benzene is a six-membered ring with alternating double bonds, okay? Now I can take this double bond, rotate it here, rotate it here, rotate it there, and I end up with that structure. You can see the double bonds aren't exactly in the same place. And so because these electrons are moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, this is called resonance. And oftentimes you see benzene like this. So don't be confused when you see benzene. Benzene has to be very specific. It's six-membered ring with alternating double bonds. So this is not benzene. This is not benzene. Okay, let's look through your book. Let's see if we can find some benzene. Okay, this is not benzene. Okay, it has to be very, very specific. Okay, benzene is super, super important. You see benzene and benzene derivatives absolutely everywhere. You see them in a lot of pharmaceuticals. If you see the prefix or suffix phen, acetaminophen, or fenfen, the drug, or fentanyl, okay, that means it's a benzene or benzene derivative. Okay, now last on our list is, is what happens when we lose even more hydrogens. So if you go back to your notes, when we lost two, we got a double bond, which we're calling alkenes. Two more, we get a triple bond, and we're going to call that alkynes. Okay, so we went from CN, H2N plus two, we lost two. CnH2n, that's your alkene, and now we've lost two more, and we get CnH2n minus two. The good news here is that it's the same idea with YNE. We don't have to worry about cis-trans isomers because the geometry is linear. A line is a line is a line is a line. So we're not going to worry anything about cis-trans on any of this, and we're just going to write structures. Okay, so for example, ethine, 
Pro Pine, which is the same as this one. Okay, the, the triple bond is between the one and the two or the one and the two, so these are the same. Once I keep drawing, then I have to say where my triple bond is. So let's say I have this one. I would call that 2-butyne versus 1-butyne. And just for kicks and giggles, I can put 3 in the longest continuous carbon chain. Actually, no, I can't. You know what? So never mind. 1-butyne, 2-butyne, and so forth. Okay, when you, when you build even more, for example, here's 2-pentine, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, Triple bond is at the one, but I have a branch here. Okay, three methyl, one pentine. So it starts to get pretty convoluted pretty fast. Okay, now the last thing that I want to talk about with our perusal of carbon chemistry is what we call functional groups. Okay, so if I go back to my little drawing here, okay, my hydrocarbons is infinite, okay? And that's great and well and good and all. Here's my pool, CX, HY. We have our alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, plus our benzenes, and so forth. But here's the thing that makes this really, really, really convoluted. Hydrocarbons are nonpolar non-polar, okay, hydrocarbon, C-X-H-Y. That means we have only carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds, and they are non-polar. And so will they mix with water? And our answer here is a resounding no. This is part of the big reason that we spent all this time on talking about polar, non-polar, like dissolves like, unit six, the solutions, and if you did it, the COVID-19 hand washing. The whole idea of how carbon acts in a living system means we have to figure out how it's gonna react in water. So what that means is the alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, benzenes, none of those will mix with water. And so you're like, oh my gosh, I hate this. Why is she making us do it? Well, you have to understand these before you can move on, okay? And so since water is polar, we want our carbon compounds to sometimes be polar. And so what sorts of elements do we have to add in order to make these polar? Well, this is why we have our electronegativity chart and our polarity, and we remember that our polar elements are over here. Okay, now typically we can add oxygen and nitrogen, and we can make things that are compatible with life. Halogens tend to be problematic, but they're very polar, and so we have to look at them too. All right, so we want to add... In our periodic table, this upper right-hand corner, those are the elements that we're going to want to add, okay? 